Hey everyone, how y'all doing? My name is Mateo and I am from Machine Masters. Today, I'm gonna show you how to properly send your music to an engineer for mixing. I do a lot of mixing and a lot of the people that ask me to mix their music, they usually ask me how they should send their music to me. This is step-by-step step the way that you should be sending your music to mixing engineers or me if you'd like. <laughs> so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna look at your session and all your audio files. First things first, let's look at your audio files. Typically, you wanna make sure that you have removed any excess audio that doesn't need to be in the song. So as you can see here, I've trimmed my drums to the areas that they need to be. I've trimmed my synths. If we look at the vocals, I've trimmed the vocals in areas where I don't need any audio, so like, in between lines or any breaths that I cut out. The other thing that's important is creating fades. So I've got fade ins and fade outs after each line. Now, this is just nice to clean up the dialogue. I'm sure if you're working with a good engineer, they will do all this for you, but this is something that's pretty easy to do. And if your engineer is billing you hourly, this means that this is more work for them that you could have done and saved yourself some money. The other reason why trimming any audio out of the song that doesn't need to be in there is because, well, the engineer doesn't necessarily know what your musical direction is. For some odd reason, there could have been a burp in between one of the lines uh, that the vocalist had, and the mixing engineer might just think, okay, maybe that's part of the ad lib, so I'm going to keep that in there. I mean, honestly, people, you never know. There's all kinds of music out there, so I've heard some pretty interesting things in songs and had to question the artist, and they're like, nope, that's supposed to be in there. I'm like, okay, your song. So if there's something that you don't want in the song, make sure you cut it out. Simple as that. The next thing that you should be aware of is you don't need to have effects like reverb and delay on the audio tracks because the mixing engineer will do all that for you. However, if there is a very specific effect that you like and you're worried that that mixing engineer may not get the right sounds, then by all means, mix down the audio with the effects on it. So I've got a scenario like that with this bass over here. I really like the sound and I really want it to sound like this after the mix. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new audio track. And I'm gonna send the bass out to a bus. So it's already bussed to 21. And I'm gonna make sure that the input of the new audio track is also set to the same bus. I'm gonna solo the tracks and I'm gonna record enable the audio track, hit record and let it mix down. Amazing, so I've mixed down my bass tracks into one audio file, and now I have those effects that I really wanted in the audio. And I've also removed the other bass tracks because they're now unnecessary. The next thing that you're gonna wanna do is proper labeling. Now, this drives me crazy, and it also drives most other engineers crazy. When they receive a ton of audio files, and they're all named audio one, audio two, audio three, et cetera. This makes our job a lot more time consuming because, well, we have to go through every track and figure out what is what. Now, again, if you're being charged hourly by the engineer, then this is money that's coming out of your pocket because you didn't take the time to just label the audio tracks. As you can see here, I have already labeled the tracks, I've got drum, I've got arp, I've got bass, I've got harm, hook, all that done. So that's great. And the reason why I do that on the audio track is because the next step that we're gonna perform is going to take the names from the tracks themselves. So once we've got the audio regions trimmed and we've put our fades in the right place and we've mixed down our effects into the audio tracks that we really want, and labeled all our tracks. Now we're going to consolidate the audio files. And what this is gonna ensure is that all the audio files will start and end at the same time. This is gonna maintain the alignment of all your audio. So when you send the audio to the mixing engineer, 
there's no way that they can mess up syncing up all the audio. So what I like to do normally is I like to make my selection starting about a bar before the first instrument. So I can see here the first instrument is the ARP. So I'm going to start from about a bar before. And I'm going to zoom out again. And then I'm going to highlight all the tracks and all the audio till about a bar after the last instrument finishes. There we go. So now my selection starts from the beginning to the end of the song. And now we're going to consolidate the audio tracks. So consolidation is in the edit menu under consolidate clip. Every DAW should have this feature. If you don't know where it is, go to the help menu and type in consolidate. There we go. And it shows you. Hey, there we go. So we've got all the audio tracks starting and finishing at the same place. This makes it super easy. And as you can see, it got all the naming from the track. So we got drum, synth, bass, lead, doubles, harmonies, hook. It's nice and organized and simple and straightforward. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take these audio files and put them in a folder so it's organized for the engineer. So typically you'll find these audio files in the audio files folder of the session. So let's go there. Great. So I've now got the folder open where my session is. Before we go any further, we're going to create a new folder specifically to send to our mixing engineer. So new folder and I'm going to say files, no stems for mixing. Uh, you know what? Phoenix. Yeah, because the name of the song is Phoenix. Great. Next, we're going to go into the audio files folder, and I've already sorted the folder by date modified. So the most recent files are going to show up here. So all these files here are the files that I've just created as consolidated files. That makes it easy for me. So I'm going to select the first one and go to the last one here. And then I'm going to copy these over into the new folder that we've just created. There we are. So now they're in this folder and I'm going to compress this folder. So it's very easy to just send through a service like Dropbox or WeTransfer, something like that. Amazing. And another thing that I just want to add, the reason why we're taking the audio from the audios files folder is because we don't want to export the audio individually through, say, bouncing or exporting or things like that. Because when you do that, there's still a bit of conversion going on in the process. So by taking the audio files directly from the audios folder, there's no conversion going on. It is just the raw, unprocessed audio. So the highest fidelity that you can get. Nothing has been messed with. Awesome. So let's take our compressed folder now and send it through a service like WeTransfer. Drag it over. Send it to your favorite mixing engineer. I'm going to say Mateo. That guy's kind of cool. And now it's sending. Amazing. So I have now downloaded this file from this client who wants me to mix their music. And it's on my desktop here. So. What I'm going to do is uncompress it. Amazing. I now have the folder with the audio files. Now I'm going to create a new session to mix the song. So I've got my Pro Tools session open and it's ready to import the audio files. I'm going to select all, drag it over into my clips. And then I'm going to drag this over into the tracks. Amazing. Would you look at that? All the audio files all lined up. Very simple. Now, an added bonus on top of this is 
in the email that you send to the mixing engineer, it's really great to include the BPM. So the BPM of this song was 115. And an added bonus would also be to include the key of the song. So the key of the song is G major. The reason for this is because if they're going to be using any sort of time-based effects like delays, it's good to know the BPM. And, uh, you know, this just helps them out, saves time. They just input it. And also, if they're going to do any tuning, if they know what the key of the song is already, it gets them started that much quicker. So there we go. So we got the BPM and the key of the song. Now let's hit play and make sure that everything does line up right. I'm gonna search for a mini nasty but the material things. I'm looking for freedom and the happiness of this life brings. Amazing. Sounds like it's all lined up, and now Mateo can work his magic and mix this track. Thanks again to all of you that checked out this tutorial. We really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about what we covered in this tutorial, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Also, if you have any suggestions for future tutorials, also leave that in the comment section below. As always, please like and share this video and subscribe to Machine Masters to keep up with all our latest tutorials. Thank you everyone, have a great day.